Hello again, everyone. Welcome back and welcome to a rare midweek review. Got several to do in the backlog, so I thought I would try to do a little catching up. Today, we're looking at a brand new cigar from Diesel. This is the Diesel Whiskey Row Sherry Cask Robusto. As you can see, it has the typical uh, whiskey row band. If you might remember it from the original, and uh, here you see where it says sherry cask. There is okay the density. Now, just a quick info. On these cigars. AJ Fernandez did make them. The wrapper is a Connecticut Broadleaf. The binder, which they speak a lot of, and you can read all about it on the, on the blog, it uses a rare Arapirica leaf from Central Brazil's uh, Alagoas region, I think's how you say it. The binder leaf was selected for aging in rabbit holes, Pedro Jimenez sherry barrels to bring out, uh, bring forth subtle notes of honey, vanilla, and molasses. When blended with spicy Nicaraguan habano and crowned with a lustrous Connecticut broad leaf wrapper, this uh, Maduro cigar, blah, blah, blah. So the wrapper is Connecticut broad leaf. The binder is Ara Arapirica. And uh, Nicaraguan Habano is the filler, if I'm understanding this correctly. They used Pedro Jimenez sherry casks to age the, uh, the, uh, the, the leaves in. And uh, it comes in, this cigar comes in three sizes. I urge you to look at the blog to get the entire background. But... It uh, comes in a Robusto, Toro, and Gigante, and it ranges from $8.49 for this cigar to $9.49 for the Gigante. And these should be on shelves now. They were due to debut in June. So um, it is the first uh, collaboration between Diesel and Rabbit Hole. So let's get right to it. The... New Diesel Whiskey Row Sherry Cask Robusto. Now this uh, is a large band at the foot. Usually these are easy to remove. I'm hoping this one is. It, uh, and the reason they're easy is they know you have to remove it. No, they don't use too much glue. And there it comes. So we'll see that at the end. You get to see all the detail. All right, so that's what we're left with. It is a nice looking cigar. The band gets sort of lost. Look how dark this band is on the outside against that dark cigar. And when you hold it back a ways, it disappears. Okay, we have a good draw there. It's always a good thing. flavors are cedar, a somewhat tart, tart black cherry, quite a bit of nutmeg, some cream, light chocolate, and black coffee almost to the espresso level. White pepper at a seven. The, I wonder if the uh, somewhat tart black cherry notes are coming. 
coming from the barrels. But that's what you have. It's uh, definitely a cedar and the somewhat tart black cherry. The black cherry itself has sweetness. There is very little brown sugar sweetness in the cigar. I would dare almost say none. So that's how you start. It's sort of uh, on the darker side. The chocolate notes that I mentioned are rather light, but they are there. So let's just see how it develops. I'm here at the first third you can hardly see it but that band is right there and I've already got to remove the uh, band as soon as I find where it starts now one thing I <clears throat> failed to mention I uh, left out in the uh, initial description is the um, there is sweetness from the chocolate so you do have some sweetness from the um, tart black cherry and the chocolate. Now, I've had a couple of these already. And uh, this is the best I've had so far. And Granted, I'm thinking about it a lot. I'm going super slow. We already got 20 minutes out of this, and I didn't think we would. But um, the flavors are actually pretty nice. They're intriguing. That's about the best word for it. Very different. They're just like I described initially. Cedar, tart, but sweet. A sweet and tart black cherry, nutmeg. I don't really have so much cream now. There is a, still a touch. So cream, um, light chocolate, straight chocolate, sweet chocolate, and uh, black coffee. Medium body. The finish is one of cream, sweet cream, and um, nutmeg with some decent, decent lingering pepper. The lingering pepper seems like a black pepper. The pepper on the front end was a white pepper that we started with. It is now black. <clears throat> the cigar is one that sort of grows on you. It's intriguing. I doubt you've had many cigars taste like this. For the first third, I'm starting it off at 91. I want to see if it uh, improves, but that's where it is right now. So let's find out. with the second third maybe a little beyond but the flavors are uh, are nice they really haven't changed that much they seem to be a little bolder just a touch the cedar the sweet and tart black cherry nutmeg chocolate light cream and um, black coffee Again, the sweetness comes from the black cherry and the chocolate. Um, I'll still call it medium body ish. Finish is unchanged. The cigar hasn't really changed, so I'm not changing the score. 91. So, you know, unless the final third screws up, it's, you know, you see what we have, and we don't have far to go. It's a very short cigar and editing and what have you. I'll be back in a few minutes to wrap it up. Well, we're down to the end. 
So let's wrap it up. As you can see, my thirds were not equal, but in the end, it's not going to matter. Uh, time segments were a little off this, this time, but the basically the same flavors continue into the final third. I believe the sweetness picked up from the beginning to the end, not substantially, but it is more noticeable. I like that sweet and tart black cherry flavor when it's combined with the cedars. Very nice. And the chocolate gives it a little more sweet. This is a very unusual cigar. And um, not something I would have every day, but it has, has a place. It is intriguing. It's, it's just interesting. It makes you want to have another one just because you're so curious about it. I would maintain 91 for the final third, so that'll give you an overall score of whoop, 91. The finish is slightly different. It has a little bit more cedar on it now, giving it a little quasi sweetness. But not much else to say. So there you have it. The Diesel Whiskey Row Sherry Cask Robusto. 91.